what's up guys still working on the 2022 updates for grub worm behind me and this video is going to be dedicated to the complete assembly of a set of of headers and what we're going to do we've got the headers mocked up on the car i'll show you right here this is the new 321 stainless turbo headers for the new season we've upgraded to two inch primaries uh, with a three inch outlet on the collector. These are billet collectors, the ones we sell on the website. We have some adapter flanges on the heads that transfer it to a round port with some extra bolt holes and different things. But uh, what we're gonna do now is take them off the car. I'm gonna show you the whole process of welding a, a header together. I see a lot of people on the fabrication pages and stuff asking how uh, header is assembled welded on the inside and all that so I'm going to walk you through the whole process from taking it off the car tube by tube to taking it over on the bench welding the tubes and so on so first before I've, I've taken these or before I started taking these headers apart I took some scrap tubing and some scrap plate and just put a couple I put three tacks on the plate and then I just put some heavy MIG tacks on this piece of scrap tubing and welded it down to the frame bar or wherever I could get it. Just the frame bars just happened to be uh, right under the headers here. So this will allow me to put the header collector exactly back in the position it was before uh, or when it was mocked up. So that'll keep me from having to try to hold all of these tubes in place and get this collector positioned exactly like it is now. So if you're able to do this, this will really save you some time after you've got everything fit exactly like you want it, go ahead and make you some type of fixture to hold the collectors in place. That way you can come back to this exact point without really having to try. So let's set up the camera, let's get these things uh, blown apart, get them on the bench, and get them prepped, and start welding. Now that we got the tubes off of the car, everything's laid out on the cart behind me. What I normally do is take either some brake cleaner or acetone. Uh, I'll probably just grab acetone because that's that's going to be better than this. Hang on. See how this rag does sometimes it's these uh, microfiber rags they don't hold up good to the acetone so if it starts smearing on the tube and stuff then i'm probably gonna switch rags but right now i've got some writing on it where i marked my tube so before i do anything i'll go ahead and get that off of there it's just easier to get off before you start sanding or doing anything like that So got the tube wiped off of all my marks. Now I'm just gonna take a scotch pad, just the green is what I normally do. I just wrap it around the tube. And just twist the tube inside of it. that's about all it gets. I'm not really trying to 
polish it like a mirror finish or anything. I'm more or less getting all of the inconsistent colors from where I've tacked it together. Uh, any type of uh, stuff where we've mocked it up or scuffed it or done anything like that. Get it all looking like it's uh, just really clean. So after you do that, obviously now you've got some impurities and stuff on the tube from the Scotch-Brite pad. So I will get a little bit more acetone and I will just clean that tube off. Get it real good where your joint is because some of that stuff will get embedded inside the crack and you'll not see it until you start welding. So that's basically it as far as prepping the tube. And now I'll do seven more of them. So let's do that. Okay, so everything is cleaned now and ready to weld. I've got it laid out on my carp, you know, passenger side, driver side. That's just the way I, I do it. You don't really have to do that, but you can figure it out once you got on there. So let's talk about our welding uh, before we get started. I've got a dedicated purge bottle. This is the bottle that stays right here all the time. It's got its own regulator and a really long hose in case I need to go over on the bench and weld or weld here, whatever. But I like using the vise here because it's a good height for me. Usually use this table for aluminum, but uh, I like the vise being up high because it makes me in a good comfortable position. So the purge plugs, the TIG Aesthetics, uh, Brad, he makes some really nice uh, purge plugs. He's actually got, so I'll, a lot more fancy versions now these are the original versions and they've been well well used you can see where i burnt them a little bit getting really close but i usually just use two of them one for the vent and then one for the argon going in it's just a copper tube it's got a flare on the end something i'm cramming the hole and we also have got some other stuff that you screw this fitting on so uh it's kind of my universal tip there so as far as flowing the argon, while we're talking about that, I usually, on a pipe like this, I will flow somewhere around 10. Sometimes even 15, but most of the time around 10. You don't really need that much, but when you've got multiple joints, possible multiple air leaks in it, uh, besides the vent at the very end, it's always a good idea to waste some argon rather than not have enough. So that's how I do the purge. Usually let it go for about maybe 30 seconds in a pipe this size before I start welding. The bigger pipes, maybe a minute before I start welding. So that's that. As far as the welder setup, uh, while the torch is sitting here, I'll tell you, uh, this is just the red tungsten. I've got a 16 Purit cup. I also have some GLS fab cups that I used. Uh, I think I broke my last one, so this is the a Purit one I had laying around. Uh, gas lens, a stubby gas lens inside there, and then of course the cup's got a diffuser on it uh, inside there. Uh, the backing cap don't necessarily have to have a long one i just i it was on here so it's going to stay on here sometimes 
the longer backing cap makes it a good way to hold it. Let's see if I can get my hand around here. Because sometimes, you know, we'll hold it like that or twist it around and hold it like you're holding a pencil or something like that. So that's just to aid my comfort in holding the torch, really. Because I think the tungsten that's in there is actually kind of short. Uh, the welder, this is a weird looking bottle. I know a lot of people ask about this bottle. This is Air Gas's Arcal Prime and the sticker is on the opposite side, so I'm not gonna show you. But this is just a fancy bottle. It's supposed to be pure argon, but I think the benefit is more of the bottle. You've got a quick connect on your gas. And you've got this fancy on off switch with a, a empty and full gauge. See, that's on, that's off. Then you've got your regulator here. You can adjust your flow way up there or you can pull it on down. So kind of fancy. Got this protection thing up here in case it drops, won't mess none of this up. But this just keeps you ha from having to worry about your regulator operating right and stuff because we switch these bottles out pretty frequently. So you always got a, um, a nice working regulator that's been checked and uh, we haven't had any problems out of the bottles yet. Well, I really like them. So the availability of them is kind of low. So I don't have all of our bottles switched out to the blues, but I've got about three quarters of them switched out, but we keep a couple browns just for like say the purge. And I think we've got one on our mobile welder. So enough about that. That's pretty much it. The welder is Everlast 350. Uh, as far as settings, I think. There's not really anything fancy on stainless. On this, I'm gonna use 75 as my max amps. And then the post flow, about eight and a half seconds. That's, that's gonna give me enough, even if the piece of tube gets pretty hot, it'll be enough to get it cool before it uh, tries to look nasty. So I always run the water cooler. Especially if you're doing a lot of welding, I think it helps keep just the torch in general cooler, even if you really don't need to keep it really cool. Like aluminum, it'll get really hot. But on the stainless, it really doesn't get that hot. But the cooler you can keep the torch, I think it, I think it makes the tungsten behave better and stuff like that. I don't know, it's just, just my thing. So I'm gonna set the camera up and we're gonna go through welding all these primaries. I'm gonna do most of it time lapse, but some of it, I'm gonna show you the real time speed of how slow I weld. And uh, like I said, 75 is the max amps. Probably aren't, I'm not using all of that, but it's there to help me get started faster because uh, I just like to start fast and then I can back off as I go. So let's start welding this stuff.
So everything's welded up now and it's ready to go back on the car and get mocked up to get welded to the flange. Now, uh, you might have seen me using the flashlight looking up in the primaries after I uh, was done or the, the ones I could see the welds at the end. I'm always checking to see how the penetration is going and we are good to go on that. But, you know, sometimes you get in a rhythm and you get to doing something and sometimes you might you might rush it and not even realize it so for what ones i can see up in the end i always every time i'm done with the primary i'll look up in the end and make sure i'm still staying consistent with uh my welds so uh right there at the end the time lapse probably didn't get it uh too good but i laid my torch hand over my vent hole on the purge plug and it actually blowed the weld out in my face where it pressurized the pipe and I had to fix a little hole there. So don't plug up your vents, long story short. So now what we're gonna do is take all these tubes back over to the car. We're gonna mock them back up just like they was before we took them off. And I'm gonna tack them to the flange in place and then I'm gonna tack them together right before the collector. That way I can unbolt the flange and I can pull everything off and it'll be attached together where at least I can get it on uh, my welding block and start putting some heavier tacks around all the primary so it don't move. So that's our next step. So let's set up the camera and mock it back up. So everything is mocked up on the car, ready to pull off. You've seen on the time lapse, basic process is put the flange on, and then I always start with the bottom side primaries and just do one at a time, putting a couple tacks at least on each port you can see. Maybe you can see, I don't know. It's hard to see. So you got a couple tacks on each port down through there. Try to alternate them as much you can, uh, side to side. Don't just put two, you know, right beside each other, but alternate them where they'll hold the the header pretty still on the flange. You don't want the flange to be able to move in case you bump it, pulling it off. Once you've got all those tacked to the flange. Then you come back over here and put a little tack in between your primaries. What this does is this holds your cluster together tightly at the end. That way when you take it off, get it over on the bench, and you pull the collector off, 
you can put obviously a little bit heavier tacks all the way around here and then you can put your collector right back in place and those won't move around because like a slip collect uh, not a slip collector but like a a formed collector you've got a little bit more wiggle room it'll slide over and have a little jiggle these billet collectors the fitment is so tight that if you don't have it perfect right here you're not going to get the collector back on without trying to you know you might have to sand or manipulate it a little bit to get it back on because it's such an exact fit so now we're going to just pull them off and get them on the bench and finish tacking the flange and then we'll start that process so now that i got the headers off uh like i said i went around and put a bunch of tack welds around the primaries just to make sure they didn't get out of position but before i did that i actually came in here on the inside where it was lining up pretty good and put some welds to hold them in place and we stretched the primaries out a little bit to fill the holes up this flange is just a little bit oversized from what the primaries are i was going to show you we've got a little cheap tool here this is just a pipe stretcher and get these dirt cheap i just haven't broke over and bought a five thousand dollar huff machine to do this with like a normal like header manufacturing place would have where you just put it up there and pump the pedal and it does all this and you don't have to use a ratchet and stuff but that little pipe expander kit is cheap but it works it worked really good on this you can see these were kind of oblong where we got it right in the bend we put that thing in there and stretched them out to fill the holes up and now i'll come in here with a torch and heat these up and take a little ball peen hammer and just go around here and get this where it's tightly fitting all the way around in every port that way at the very end we can come back and weld inside the ports so right now is what we're going to do we're going to get the torch and uh, get these fitting really good on the inside of the port before we do any welding on the outside so we'll start doing that Everything is fit out to the outside of the port. You can see we've got them hammered all the way out to the outside. So now it'll be really easy just to come in here and weld that in because there's not no big gaps to deal with. So the next thing on the list for assembling these things is we're going to put the collector star in. Now these are pretty much even. I'll probably sand them just a little bit to make them a little bit more even because i guess i guess during mock-up some of them pulled out of the collector like a 16th of an inch or something I mean, it's really not even that big a deal but the more even they are the more uh, even the weld will be across there so i want to go back here we've got some collector stars and a lot of people use spikes. No, you can't really see me back here. A lot of people use spikes. But on a turbo car, a spike really isn't even needed. I don't think you see the advantage of it when you're actually making back pressure versus a naturally aspirated car or a nitrous car. You're, the exhaust is flowing out, so it's the spike is actually helping. But in a turbo car, I really don't see the need of it. If anything, the spike will come loose and go through the turbo. So we've got some 12 gauge, open these here. We've got some 12 gauge 
stainless steel stars laser cut out and these are what I use so when sealing off the header on the inside I know this is too big but I'm just showing you by example we're gonna weld that star right there and that is what's going to seal in between your primaries we just got to find the right one here the right size that looks closer yeah there we go it should line right up with those cracks with the seam down there god almighty he's hammering like crazy but yeah yo for those who are wondering how you seal in between the primaries or how you get in there to weld you don't actually get in there to weld after you put the collector on you have to do this first so we're going to weld the star on and then put the collector on so you don't have to get up in there with any kind of fancy magical stuff you're just doing it just on the outside so that's what we're going to do next so let's do it So this is what you end up with if your collector star welded all the way in. True, but you're going to have to wrap your weld all the way around to your tack that originally held these together before you pulled everything apart. Reason why, when you put your collector on, it's going to go to where that black line is that I made before I pulled it off the first time. The corner of it's going to go up in there. You're going to have to weld the perimeter of the collector and that weld is going to connect to the weld that's in between these primaries and that's going to seal everything off in that corner. That's why you need to connect that root down through there or that ditch. You need to connect it with a solid weld all the way to your collector star and that's going to complete your seal. So then obviously I come around here with a sander and just clean this up in case I had any burn through and stuff. There's no way to really purge whenever you're doing the star right there. Unless you maybe had somebody standing here blowing argon on it or something like that. This is just too big to try to get all this stuff purged. So you just, you just do it without. It comes out pretty good.
before i start welding the flange i'll show you this how i keep the flange flat while i'm welding it i've got a two by four inch solid aluminum block and i basically c clamp the flange to the block while i weld it as far as purging this block does have some purge holes in it but i really don't use them what i'm gonna do i'm gonna tape up these holes where nothing can leak out and i've got a purge plug up inside the primary that i'm going to be welding so i'll weld this primary all the way purge it then i'll just switch it in the hole here and it'll purge out that way so it's always good to clamp it to something that's uh, a good heat sink when you're welding it that'll help the flange stay flat after you're done welding it leave it clamped until it cools down let it cool slow and that'll help it stay flat also so let's get the welding
So all the primaries are welded. This one I just finished. I've got four C clamps on it, holding it to the aluminum block. This is acting as a big heat sink and I will leave it clamped here for, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so, let it cool down. And then I'll speed up the process cause I don't like to sit here and do nothing. I'll take the air hose and just blow over the flange a little bit, take some heat out of it faster until it gets uh, cool enough to mess with with my hands and then I'll take it off. But you just wanna make sure that it's clamped down flat because what it'll do, it'll try to curl up on the ends. And then in the middle, especially, it'll try to bow up. But with this particular uh, style flange, the stall adapter, uh, I'm able to weld in between these primaries. We actually spread them out uh, in their orientation so I could weld in between. So I was able to weld both sides and then go a pass over top of both welds so that worked out really good that's going to beefing it up right there in the middle you can tell where i got more heat in these than i did this i had to crank the welder up to about about 87 amps is what i've got it on now and i was pretty much full pedal the entire time i was I'd pulse it just a little bit if my puddle got away from me and it tried to open up too big. If it was like a couple of these spots right around the back side was really hard to get the filler in. And with a 16 cup, I was really having to stick out the tungsten. And that's why I was going to say, don't be afraid to stick the tungsten out. I mean, you can see, I don't know how far that is just guesstimating, but, uh, it's out there pretty good. And my gas flow is about 35. And you can see I'm having no problem laying that thing in there and getting to all those hard to reach spots and still having plenty of gas coverage. You can see some of those welds are even silver where it's covering it so good that it's not even uh, discoloring at all. Right around the back at the end, it's going really slow. But anyway, so that's what you do. You weld the primaries up all the way around, or this is is my order of steps. Weld the primaries up. The one over there on the picnic table, it is already done. So now, once this gets cool, I will take this off, and we will weld around the collectors, and that uh, will finish out the outside of the header and then we'll move to the inside of the primaries very last. So what we've got here is my little V-band welding fixture. Or that's what it started out as. When we used to do our production turbo headers, people would order V-band options. So I put female two and a half and three inch V-bands on this piece of square tube. And then I'd, I'd put a female V-band on the header also. So flat against flat. It was just something that I could clamp it make sure it wasn't gonna warp. Plus, uh, I could loosen it a little bit and I could spin, I could spin it around and you know not have to go behind the vise to weld it or whatever. But it really works out with welding collectors. And the reason why is because in this joint here, I like to weld down and let the filler rod uh, or the melted filler fall into that joint right there. Instead of laying it on the table and welding it sideways, I think this fills it up a lot more, uh, distributes the filler rod a lot better doing it that way. That's just, that's just my opinion of it. The uh, corners here have to be filled in pretty good and connected to that weld. So having it down like this lets you really be able to push it in there without it you know, going a weird direction on you. So after we, uh, the next thing I will do is weld this collector all the way around. And once I do, this header will technically be completely sealed up. Now you wouldn't, you don't really have to weld inside of these, 
I mean, I've seen uh, I've seen plenty of headers that the inside is not welded and just the outside's welded and vice versa. Most of your production headers that you get are welded on the inside and then they are just tack welded uh, like some MIG tacks and stuff on the outside. But with every set of headers that I have built in the recent, I guess, four years, at least I've welded inside and out of every single primary just because that's the ultimate strength that's going to be more durable and last a lot longer a lot of times when people weld just the inside they'll go in here and sand it out and what they're doing they're sanding most of the weld away and then over time you got hairline cracks forming right where the weld seam is and there's no weld on the outside to seal it up so that's a leak and with something that's going to be seeing uh 50 pounds of back pressure and just a lot of abuse uh, with this particular combo grub worm over there i'm going to make sure you get all the weld you can on there to where he don't have no problems down the road so let's get the camera set up and uh let's weld these all the way around uh both headers we got the other one done as well it's over there ready so we're good to go So those turned out great. They always do the billet collectors weld super good because they're obviously thicker and they're gonna hold more heat. And if you're welding something that's not getting really hot, then it always turns out looking better, especially when you're talking about stainless. So in the video, you might've noticed that I made uh, two passes on this collector. I usually always do two passes on the collector. Uh, the first reason is because I might not get enough filler in here the first pass and uh, with coming back with a second pass I can just kind of wash everything out and make it look smooth it does make it stronger adding more filler doing two passes but it's really not needed I do it more for a visual thing than anything my first pass I'll do 1 16th filler rod and then the last pass I'll do it a lot colder and do it with a uh, 035. So you see this has a nice transition from the uh, collector to the primary. It doesn't have a really sharp jagged shelf on it and that's what I want. Something that feels smooth transitioning up to the collector because that's going to look really good on the car and it's going to look like you know what you're doing. And hopefully I know what I do, I'm doing. So as far as the uh, purge, while I'm doing this, usually just throw a purge plug in there in the shortest primary and turn it up to about 15 or something, <coughs> excuse me, and throw some yellow tape across the other primaries, poke some vent holes in each one. That way when it pumps down here and fills this bottom section up, argon's heavier than air, so it's gonna push the air out here get that out of there and that way whenever you're burning this in uh, you won't have sugar inside of your primary holes where the, it comes in the to the collector so i'm gonna get this thing off this fixture and put it in a vise and i'm gonna weld around all the primaries inside 
and then do it for the other header and then this header assembly video will be done and I will be done and I can go home and go to bed and do it all over again tomorrow morning. So let's uh, get to this last step. So here's showing uh, the primaries welded on the inside. I've not sanded the flange yet, but you can see you just go around there and melt it in. But then I'll take a sand, uh, buffer wheel or flapper wheel and knock that edge off where the weld tried to roll over on top because that'll be a, a leak point or a potential leak point. So you want to sand that off, but make sure that your weld goes down in the primary enough where when you knock that hump off, you're not knocking off all your weld. That's what I see with a lot of uh, different headers or that I've seen in the past headers coming here where the weld has been sanded off. They're taking all the weld off. So they're just exposing the crack again. So make sure you get your weld deep enough. That's why sometimes I'll short the tube inside the flange a little bit. That way my weld is on the inside of the flange, kind of like that. The reason why I've not cleaned anything else up yet because this little sliver here, Jonathan wants me to build that up a little bit wider on both sides. That way it'll have more gasket sealing surface right there. So I'm gonna make like two or three passes wide on each side right there and then sand it back flat where that'll be a flatter spot to lock down on the gasket and seal in between them two uh, primaries. So this is it for welding the headers up. I'll show you what they look like in the, on the car whenever I bolt them back up after they cool down and that'll be a wrap. So there they are, two inch headers on grub worm. F body over the towers, we did it. And they look good. Pretty proud of how they come out. Everything fits just like it's supposed to. I actually, since Jonathan hasn't provided me with a gasket to use uh, that he's gonna be using, uh, these are aluminum gaskets. I had some LS gaskets, these old cheapos in the back, and I actually cut pieces of the aluminum gasket to simulate what'll probably be the thickness of the copper gasket whenever I bolted these back up. So that'll uh, ensure that the hot side isn't gonna fit different with a gasket on it versus not, because depending on how thick the gaskets are that he runs, that could throw something off a little bit, especially with the V-bands with the locating ring and stuff in it but everything clears just like it did uh, during mock-up. You always worry about one of your header tubes pulling or something like that when you weld, and especially uh, with stretching them out and the things that we did. I mean, we did a lot of pulling and prying and uh, just getting them, you know, the way they should be before welding. And luckily nothing moved, it doesn't look like, so we're good to go. So tomorrow morning, I'll, well, it is tomorrow morning now, but 
go home, sleep a little bit, come back, and do the hot side. Uh, when I come back, maybe finish it up uh, later this weekend, and he'll be good to get this thing uh, Monday morning, hopefully, is the plan. So there's your step-by-step -step header assembly, start to finish. For any of you guys that have ever wondered how the headers get welded inside and out. Here's your answer if you watch this whole video. See ya.